Hello everyone, this is Professor Hosselman, and in today's lecture we're going to be talking about gender in contemporary world history. Now the contemporary period of world history is a crucial point of change in gender relations and conditions for women. In turn, gender issues form part of the definition of this period after many centuries in which no fundamental developments occurred in this arena at a global level. At the same time, questions must be raised about the uniformity and extent of change, which makes gender history a complex part of the contemporary global mosaic. Though there were differences in timing and extent, widespread changes occurred in women's educational access and in key political and legal rights. Many of these developments were supported by international non-governmental organizations, or international NGOs, and after 1945, by the United Nations. Changes in work rules occurred, but there was great variety here depending on region and location. Widespread reductions in birth rates also affected gender relations, and at the same time, many formal and informal forces were eager to maintain more traditional gender roles. Now, gender roles constitute, or gender relations, excuse me, constitute one of the important themes in the contemporary period, as already mentioned. Examining gender relations also allows us to measure developments in this period against previous developments and raise some analytical issues. We'll begin with some background to our discussion of gender issues. Patriarchal gender relations were characteristic of agricultural economies. We also saw that the classical civilizations enshrined patriarchal relationships in codes of law and conduct. In the post-classical period, two contradictory trends emerged that constituted the next reshaping of gender relationships. The spread of world religions established a degree of spiritual equality between men and women and began to attack certain traditional practices such as female infanticide. Some trends were established that could worsen women's conditions, such as the practice of foot binding in China. Neither the early modern period nor the long 19th century introduced systematic global changes in gender relations, although there were specific social and regional developments. The contemporary period ushered in some developments that clearly erode traditional hierarchy, or patriarchy, excuse me although they do not necessarily establish true equality. This period of world history will probably be regarded as one of, the mo one of which many traditional gender assumptions were rethought and traditional relationships reconstituted. A number of factors pushed for change in the contemporary period. Many of the revolutions of the 20th century, in contrast to the Atlantic revolutions, did not have real gender impact although most of these relations heralded their implications for gender relations. Except in Iran, women found in the revolutionary regimes new opportunities for public roles, principles of legal equality were also established. The fact of rhetorical change uh, itself and the changes in opportunities for women were significant. Nationalist movements often used women actively, then uh, shunted them aside but the process of galvanizing women to voice their concerns helped to accelerate change. World economic relationships also had an impact on gender. Changes in production processes provided new opportunities for women, for example, in certain kinds of factories, but they also produced new competition for women's work. Larger processes, such as urbanization and the reduction of infant mortality, had an impact on women. Increasingly important from the 1950s onward, were the operations of government and NGO international agencies. By the late 19th century, a number of international feminist movements had formed that pressed the women's rights agenda on governments and international agencies around the world. The UN Charter Statements of Rights conventionally included gender issues and provided a framework for pressure in individual societies towards changing gender roles laws, and gender relationships more widely. In 1965, the United Nations began to sponsor a Year of the Woman every de decade, or even a Decade of the Women. The UN conferences also spawned local non-governmental organizations, or NGOs, to work on women's rights issues and report on these issues to larger groups such as Amnesty International. During the 20th and early 21st centuries, change took certain uh, clear directions. Uh, 
Beginning a little before World War I in Scandinavia and after the war in the United States, the Soviet Union, Germany, Turkey, and other European countries, voting rights for women were established. Other legal rights were attached to this basic con con conversion in suffrage systems, including divorce and property rights. In addition, women gained, around, gained ground during the 20th and to date the 21st centuries. By the early 21st century, in an impressive variety of, of, uh, of societies, women began to gain majority ascendancy, even in higher education. Parity in education could be expected to translate into greater job opportunities and political voice. Voting rights, legal rights, and educational change propelled increasing female representation in elected legislatures. Gains have been made in this area in the United States, Europe, South Asia, China, and Russia. Women also gained a new measure of equality in consumerism, participating in an opportunity, opportunities to buy things as a means of self-expression. These changes apply to almost every region of the world and brought an end to the literal patriarchal systems. Feminist, <coughs> excuse me, feminists still use the term patriarchy as a means of pointing out inequalities, but from a historical standpoint, developments in the 20th century suggest the beginning of the new end of patriarchal systems that had predominated through the long agricultural period of world history. Not all systems work the way they are supposed to. In rural India, for example, women have the right to vote, but fathers or husbands uh, check to make sure they have they, that they vote correctly. Now, in gender relations, as in many other aspects of contemporary world history, we can point to patterns of change, new issues and new causes, but we do not know the end of the story. We can also highlight intriguing complexities. Some regions have more smoothly adopted gender change than others. Regions that have experienced revolutions, such as China, see far less debate about new roles for women than do, re do regions where change has been more incremental, such as rural India or the Middle East. By the end of the 20th century, every major region in the world was participating in a slowing of the birth rate. Some regions had achieved women at what's known as the demographic transition, in which the average woman has a small number of children, uh, almost all of whom live. Western Europe and the United States experienced demographic transitions by the end of the 19th century or the early 20th, while Japan and the Soviet Union did so either between World Wars or right after World War II. Latin America experienced its demographic transition in the 1970s. Sub-Saharan Africa and some Islamic regions have yet to experience a demographic transition, even though their birth rates have begun to drop. We do not know for sure whether succeeding decades will demonstrate that this is another area where women's conditions are changing in similar directions. This tendency to reduce the birth rate will inevitably have additional implications for women's lives and their relationships with men in the future. Along with uh, new rights and increased access to education have come new opportunities for or new demands on women to participate in the labor force outside the home. Communist societies usually insisted on substantial levels of work for women, although women might be paid less than men and have limited opportunities in certain occupations. In Western Europe and the United States, women's work com uh, commitments gained ground systematically only from the later 1950s onward. Japan entered this picture a little later and seems to be moving in a similar direction. Some of the more exploited areas of the world economy seem to discourage women's work participation. In Africa, for example, as peripheral type jobs expanded, men tended to seize them and leave the women responsible for agriculture. Similar developments occurred with the fall of communism and Marxism in much of Eastern Europe. With a loss of Marxism's support for gender equality and with increasing economical turmoil, many women found their economic positions eroding. Individual men and groups of men in many societies have found ways to retaliate against women for the gains they have achieved. It's likely that violence against women has increased in contemporary world history, with men using direct attacks on women as a way to express their frustration and as a reaction to pressures urging revisions of traditional gender relationships. It's also possible that rape and violence against women have increased as instruments of war.
Sometimes the pushback of men may take legal form as in the revival of customary legal codes. Western feminists and other advocates until recently have usually agreed on a human rights agenda for women, but some are now arguing that the Western version of feminism is not what they want. Some Indian women, for example, have written that they do not want to see arranged marriages replaced with Western marriage patterns. Arranged marriages as seen as better for women and more likely to be stable and put less pressure on women to beautify themselves for men. Many Middle Eastern women may wish to revise Islam to some extent, but without adopting a Western version of women's rights. In Egypt and elsewhere, veiling is seen by some women as an important expression of their ability to make individual choices and a gesture of defiance against undue international influences. Some African feminists have argued that the Western International Women's Rights Package is too individualistic and that Africa has its own traditions of collective and family protection for women. These complex gender issues remain a fundamental part of the shaping of the contemporary period in world history. And this is the end of this lecture on gender in the contemporary period. This is Professor Hosselman in History 107.